this is opposite of the one we did earlier. And all you do is you cover your teeth with your lips and go like this. <laughs> like that. You can feel all nice. the muscles, Stretch. right? You guys were rolling. Really stretched. <laughs> That's one of the funnier ones. We, we like that one pretty much. So uh, welcome everybody to the Spot for Health. My name is Shirley Kutkowski and we are here today once again for with our part two of uh, anxiety with Lori Sherman and she is a practicing clinical dental hygienist over at Wisconsin Dental Solutions on Main Street. And uh, if you remember last time we talked about a lot of different ways that she has in her bag of tricks to treat patients that have anxiety. We started by talking about crazy things like IV sedation, which they do there, but that, not her. You don't do that, right? No, I don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the building, but not in the room. Okay. Correct. 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 <laughs> so that works aw awesome. Um, and uh, we covered a lot of territory, but there still are some other things that we want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are going to be talking about today on the Spot for Health, where Sun Prairie goes to find options for health care in Sun Prairie. And um, we like to have all kinds of options here available. And when we talk about anxiety, we have what we do at Primal Air to kind of take care of things in your everyday life and then in special circumstances like in a dental care situation we have other options available that are more for an acute kind of a situation but the way that Lori was explaining it to us last time was that some of the tricks and procedures that she uses in her practice over there is uh, really transferable or take withable in her in their everyday practice so Lori has been a practicing clinical dental hygienist for over 30 years. Oh, <laughs> it's hard when you're 29 like us, right? <laughs> Just to be practicing for that long. So that's uh, that's really exciting, and she's really spent a lot of times, a lot of time and effort on her own mm -hmm. to study different aspects of healthcare. I hate to say dental hygiene, but it is part of our scope of practice to talk about nutrition and anxiety and meditation and alternative health practices. Um, did you did you ever study acupuncture? Um, just general. Just nothing kind of, specific. You've never poked anybody. I have not. We should have take you? a class. Have no, you? Uh -huh. I never did either. I don't know. You know they study the tongue. They do study the tongue. I would love that. That sounds like we'll have to find a practitioner that'll <laughs> teach us how to do uh, acupuncture. So um, that's uh, that's Lori's pedigree over here, and she yes. practices at Wisconsin Dental Solutions on Main Street, which we share a parking lot. Yes. And uh, your address is twelve sixty West Main Street. Do you have a website? We do. It's uh, Dental Solutions for the number four. U.com. Y-O-U? Y-O-U. Dental Solutions for You. Is there, that's the website. That's so they right. can find out a lot more about everything and contact yes. you from the website as well. Absolutely. So last time we talked about um, the first five mindful attitudes of um, dealing with anxiety to, de to decrease anxiety. And today we're going to pick up with number six. So the first ones were um, patience. These are not in the right order. Patience and um, non-judgmental and Inten beginner's mind. Intention. Intention. I'm missing. You're missing one too? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to go back through our notes. But today we're going to start out with um, this idea of non-striving. And what exactly does that mean? What we mean by that is um, when we're anxious, our gut instinct is fight or flight. Mm -hmm. and, and truthfully, in the dental office, we see both. <laughs> yes. I mean, some people will actually become quite argumentative, quite combative. Um, you know, it's just this whole back off yeah. kind of feeling that they, yes. they're trying to deal with. 
And so um, what we're going to ask them to do is first to be aware of it and by uh, acknowledging, I see you're stressed, take a breath, take a belly breath, mm -hmm. let's relax and I'll, I'll be patient and I'll talk you through this and you totally are at choice. So I want to make it okay for them to take it down a notch mm -hmm. and just not go to that instinct. Uh, anxiety is, is um, powerful and the mind is really powerful. And that's the beauty of these mindful attitudes is it gives you choice and empowers you to have control mm -hmm. and, and work with it and make it a better experience. So I don't know why this, whatever you just said, made me wonder, do you practice with the lights off? What's the environment like in your treatment room? Or what's the, requ re if you had your way, what would your treatment room look like? Um, if I had my way, I'd, I do have a, a beautiful window, which sometimes we can you know, keep open and sometimes we can't due to heat and bright lights. Uh, but yeah. wouldn't it be great to have a nature preserve out there oh, that's yeah. so relaxing? Of Main <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Zoom>. <laughs> so that would be a wonderful thing. Um, and then uh, temperature control is nice, um, audio control, music. Now, some offices like to have a TV playing. And um, in my room in particular, I'm pretty set against that. Uh, because I want to help the patient through this appointment. I don't want them to check out. And, uh, you know, they're looking around you trying to see the show and yeah. stay connected with the TV. I don't want you to come and make a connection with the TV. You're coming so we can try and make There's you healthy. There's nothing on television <laughs> worth seeing right then. There's mm -hmm. news and all of that is scary and toxic yes. or bubble gum. And, you know, how many house flipping shows can you watch as a <laughs> during a dental appointment? I don't know. It's I'm with you. I want to be engaged with the patient, and I want to know before they are filled with saliva or they have a pool of saliva at the back of their throat that they need something instead of them jumping up. I, I don't I'm with you. I don't like the television. So, um, and then... You offer a blanket, you said, so that they can be more comfortable with temperature because that can be yes. um, problematic as well. It's hard to be calm if you're freezing. Yes, you're automatically knotted up, mm -hmm. tense. You put the blanket on and you can just see them. <sighs> yes. Yes. And then shutting the lights off, even though you have a nice big window, um, the where I practice they have a big window too, and I sometimes I leave the lights off if it's nice and sunny out. Those lights have an energy that isn't exactly well received. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not one to talk like that, but <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. In um, the music, I have the option of internet music. So if they have a favorite Pandora station or something, we can turn that on. So they've got something in the background that's not grating on their nerves. Mm -hmm. It's not all about me. It's about them. Right. This is in service to them. So you don't have background sounds of oceans or chirping we can. birds. Oh, so if, that, if they want that, too. that's an option. Yes, uh, I'm very flexible and open to whatever they'd like mm -hmm. to have. I will find it. Okay. So do <laughs> they have wear happen. headphones or is it just in the room? It's There's a speaker Okay. Uh, right behind us. So because if they have headphones, they mm -hmm. could tune me out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turn towards me. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> Even something like that, because, you know, I struggle a little with left and right. I, I have like a two dyslexia. And um, <laughs> so I just have them turn towards me instead of turning to the right or left. And that takes one decision or one, one equation out of the equation. So they don't really have to think or accidentally turn the wrong direction and be embarrassed. So mm -hmm. um, I take mm -hmm. it to that level as mm -hmm. well. Yes, and so it, it's really helpful to um, create that environment that they're able to relax, able to breathe, and they don't have that fight or flight response. And, and I want them to even recognize that themselves. It's important because then they can repeat this anywhere they go, is to 
uh, be present in the moment. You hear that all the time. Yeah. Let's be present. Be present. Be present. <laughs> I like tomorrow. <laughs> I'm all about That's tomorrow. <laughs> I'm totally about tomorrow. So what is um, this next one here is self-reliance. So how mm -hmm. does that fit in? Mm -hmm. Well, when you're self-reliant, you learn that you uh, can take control of the situation, that um, you're aware of your anxiety, and you're able to make uh, a plan to deal with it. So if you know that you have some concerns or some issues that need to be handled a certain way, you start by researching, whether it's on the internet or with your friends and family, asking for a referral, mm -hmm. letting people know what you need, um, ask for it. Um, the more that you do that and practice that, some people are just like, oh, I could never. Of course you can. Do it. Practice it. Get used to it. Mm -hmm. You can do it kindly. You don't, it's, we're not asking you to come in and, um, you know, rewrite and direct the, the whole yeah. <laughs> practice. <laughs> Just come in and let me know what your needs are and we're gonna build that whole room around you in that moment and, and give you some confidence. We really wanna build your confidence that you can manage this and you can get through it. You know that it, this will eventually pass, that you can get through it, you can do mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it's just going to hurt for a minute if it is uncomfortable. Um, so mm -hmm. using this this one particular, the self-reliance thing, what if they're going to a different location or a different practice? How much flexibility do patients really have, do you think, in a, a dental practice situation? I think they have more than they think. And you don't know until you ask. <laughs> so let's That's start right. with asking. Mm -hmm. Don't assume. Ask, ask. Um, if you need things slower, if you need in direction, mm -hmm. if ask. And you can ask on the phone when you first call for your first appointment. Mm -hmm. uh, usually that receptionist knows very well how the whole operation works mm -hmm. and what they can do and offer for you and if it's going to be a good fit. And that way, you've already set the stage. You've already set the stage and let them know so that when they come, you come to that practice, they're prepared. Mm -hmm. How wonderful is that? It is awesome, and it translates as well to other kinds of practices. So if you're going to a chiropractor, or if you're going mm -hmm. to a, an ENT, or if you're going because this, everybody's got this cough, and they're, <laughs> they're going in to see a mm -hmm. physician's assistant, you have more say, and by using the techniques that we've been, t we've been talking about over the last while here, we really have, we can be more and ask for more if you start out that way. I think some of the anxiety comes in because you really wanna say it, and then you don't, because the doctor will be mad, or the hygienist will be mad, or the massage therapist will be mad, or who cares? They're there for you, you're paying them, they want to treat you the best way that you want to be treated, mm -hmm. and they do have some flexibility. And I think this is a really good point here, this self-reliance. I really feel like it's also a new, it's a new thought in a, essence, because it, it was kind of old school, you know, teacher, student, I come and do what you want, what you tell, boom, boom, boom. And, and now it's more of a, a co-creative, a partnering, yes. uh, you know, I'm there to serve, I'm not there to scold, I'm there to help. <laughs> I hardly ever do this anymore. This Thank heaven. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> now that I'm not everybody's mother anymore. <laughs> but you're right, even in our practice, it's like, okay, so we're going to do as much as we can with what you're capable of doing. Yes. And if you can't do any more, then we're not going to do any more until we can do more. Mm -hmm. So that is, I think, what's happening in healthcare in general. Um, it is. If you're not getting that from your healthcare provider, then I think you should ask for it or interview some other ones because I think you might have a little more play. And the faster you do that, the less whiny you sound. Truth. 
truth. I'm telling you, you know, <laughs> it's so exciting. Nipping it in the bud is exactly what we're trying to do here, and um, teaching our patients self reliance without being snotty or having an attitude or being judgmental of the clinician, you know. And it, it's true. There's there's so many different scenarios for different people. So yeah. it's not like one size yeah. fits all. And you may have to try on a few different practitioners mm -hmm. to find the one that fits for you. I wouldn't ever assume that my practice is gonna be perfect for everyone. There are people who are in a hurry that don't need much attention. Uh, go, go, go. I may not be a good fit and that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Um, you may not want to hear about wellness. I mean, I'm open too. Let me know yeah. and, and we'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just keep on your merry way. I remember a long time ago I was, at a, I was working at a practice um, for quite some time and I had a patient who was a lawyer, so of course right away you're nervous. And he's looking at his watch and he's laying there and I'm like, oh my God, I better hurry because this guy's in a big hurry. And he's looking and he's, I'm like scrubbing away and doing everything and I'm into like hyper speed. And he called the office the next day and complained that I was done too fast. So he was oh. thinking I was in a hurry and that I was going too fast and I thought he wanted me to hurry up. <laughs> So, you know, it was a complete miscommunication. I was I was gobsmacked <laughs> when my office manager Absolutely. told me. I'm like, you have to be kidding me. No, no, he was really upset you got done so fast. <laughs> I was like, I've got like rug burns <laughs> from trying to hurry up because Killing I thought yourself. he was in a hurry. So, um, <laughs> checking in, that's yes. how important checking in is. I could nice see someone looking. Do you have somewhere you need to be? I see you checking your watch. Yes. <laughs> or if if they come running in, I was just like, it looks like you're in a hurry. Yes, yes or no? I'm not sure. Please yeah. tell me so that we're clear. When I'm clear, we're all on the same page. Yay, it's celebrate time. <laughs> so our next um, topic mm -hmm. here is letting be or allowing. How does that fit in with anxiety control? Um, well, with anxiety, it's not like we're going to like make it gone. Mm -hmm. So part of it is letting it be and understanding, yes, this I'm experiencing anxiety and it didn't kill me before, so I'm probably gonna live through it again, mm -hmm. um, but it might be a better story this time. Yep. And so sometimes just giving into it it's a totally different energy that you bring to this to the situation which helps create the new story and so sometimes giving in to your your feelings i mean notice your breathing notice your stomach notice your your pulse notice your temperature all those things and just be aware and watch for changes watch for changes oh look at that it got a little better. Oh, look at that kind of bothers me. So you're aware, you let people know and share that information if they can help. So it's all very helpful to just kind of give into it and um, be aware and, and fight that instinct to mm -hmm. fight or flight. Uh, the more you can repeat this and do that, that becomes the teacher. Mm -hmm. So you're learning as you go, because when you're in fight or flight, your rational mind is gone. <laughs> right. Gone. <laughs> and so you can't learn. You're not even in a learning position. It changes everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They say that learning takes place at the end of your comfort zone. So mm. the anxiety piece is, is the uncomfortable piece, I think. And so getting used to that level of discomfort is um, is helpful and teachable. And I think that your point is very well made. It's when you cross over, when the anxiety is like taking over, that's where the problem is. But being anxious doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing. Correct, correct. Um, we want to um, be learn, you can actually learn to be comfortable with discomfort. Yes. So from little on, sometimes we've learned 
to, to run, to stop, to avoid, to quick get out of a situation, anytime it feels uncomfortable, that's not real life. Right. It just isn't. And, and really, I think it inhibits your growth. It inhibits your relationships, your experiences. Mm -hmm. And so by learning and practicing to become more comfortable with discomfort, you have just expanded your world tremendously. But it's, it's helpful to have a teacher help along with that. Um, mm -hmm. Being a dental patient is a very vulnerable um, situation. And I don't know that everybody really understands that. We go into somebody's body, <laughs> their most important part of their body, the, one of the most vulnerable places where they communicate from, where they, um, where they eat, where they do all, a lot of different things that, that uh, filter down into the whole self and into the whole body. So... Um, appreciating that I think mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. needs to have another level of importance. Yes, yes, see, it's so much more helpful to have a provider mm -hmm. that understands and offers this level of respect and patience and to honor a patient's space and, and to ask permission to do things and to take your time and um, it, you form the relationship before you dive in. Yes. Uh, you just don't go up to a stranger. <laughs> and, I know. And assume all Lay of Lay down. The, open your pie hole. These things. <laughs> I, exactly. Yeah, that's not going to go over. No, it's not helpful. And then the last, or the second to last thing is self-compassion. Yes, yes. You know, lately I heard um, there's a story going around and it talks about how many times a day some people will go through and say, um, I'm sorry I'm running late. I'm sorry I'm so difficult. I'm sorry this. And then the flip side of that was instead we could consider saying, thank you for your patience. Thank you for waiting for me. Thank you for this. Does that not change the whole energy? When you spend your whole day running around apologizing, yeah. that's hard. That's really hard, and I, it's not um, it's not in service to yourself, right? And so that can really help change the whole um, partnership, the whole situation. Let's just be kind to ourselves. Yes. Yeah, you got to stop whipping yourself. Yes. I think people do that a lot. Oh, we're so it's, hard. It's not as bad anymore as what it used to be. I think. I think people are learning that that's not helpful. And we're but, talking about it. And But that's reminding them is really, really good. And it's so easy to just fall into the trap of, uh, yeah, you are, you know. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, some people would do that. <laughs> well, because no. you don't want to argue with them either. Oh, I guess you are a big turd, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a caution it's a sign. <laughs> it's a dance. I, I really did just say a T word. Okay. So then the the balancing all of this and being composed is is also um, part of anxiety abatement. Um, being composed, I think, is uh, helps you manage the anxiety because you know it's there. It can be there, it's off to the side for a minute, but you're still composed. Yes, because you haven't focused your mind mm -hmm. on that, that spiraling, big, growing, black, dark hole of fear and anxiety. Instead, you've stepped back away from it so you can have your rational mind, you can find balance. It's um, a place of growth, it's a place where you learn and you develop relationships, it's a much happier, productive, uh, healthier place to be. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the whole thing is about, is creating health. And this is what's, you know, one step in the process that can open all kinds of new horizons for you. 
I think that's great. Um, it's, it's helpful to know that you are there to help your patients mm -hmm. and they can find you there. And it's helpful to know that they can also ask for this wherever they go. This Absolutely. isn't necessarily something that can only happen in your treatment room, you, Lori. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something that is a learned behavior. Yes. And that is well received in the healthcare community. And it's only, I'm going to say this, it's going to sound terrible, um, but these highly, highly specialized uh, healthcare providers that have a real narrow, narrow area of expertise. So mm -hmm. let's say a kidney doctor that specializes in the, the tiny part of your kidney that guy is probably still going to be spicy. I don't know what it is about these highly specialized people, but you, you don't have as much flexibility there. But for the most part, every healthcare provider is open to your feedback and your, um, your health and I, helping you. I have to agree. I think it, the face of health in medicine and dentistry has changed tremendously. Yeah. And uh, I give a lot of credit to all the healthcare providers who've taken the time to do the mm -hmm. research, the practice, the studies, the training. And it's not something that, I mean, they're trained in books. Yeah. They're experts at books yeah. and um, surgeries and those type of things. And so the whole people side is another whole th area of mm -hmm. expertise. And so it, it didn't necessarily come easily to them. And I, I appreciate and applaud everyone who's taken the time. Well, and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't, as a patient, try. Oh, absolutely. And talk to them. And they've at least had experience. <laughs> they've had at least one class recently about how to deal with patients. So I think that's, <laughs> that's pretty important. I was uh, with a friend of mine at the emergency room at UW a couple of years ago, and the doctor was walking out the room, as it usually happens, and you have one more question. And so the doctor came back into the treatment room, in the emergency room, and sat down and asked for that, and answered that question sitting down. So there's... There's been movement, even with the younger clinicians. Oh, yeah. So, Lori, thank you so much for being with us again here on The Spot for Health. Thank and, you. And um, helping us understand what you do personally for mm -hmm. your patients mm -hmm. at Wisconsin Dental Solutions who have anxiety and what patients can do in general when they're dealing with other health care providers. I really appreciate your insight and your time. You're welcome. Thank Two you for having episodes. me. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> So my name again is Shirley Gutkowski, and uh, this has been The Spot for Health, where you can find information for your health right here in Sun Prairie. I appreciate your time. Share these episodes, if you can, on ksun.tv, and um, let your friends know that they can find more information here or on the website. This is Shirley Gutkowski signing off. <laughs>